How do bullet seating forces vary based on different types of new brass? That's what we're gonna check out in this video. Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. I just did an in-depth video on the Short Action Customs Infinity APS die. This is an inline seater die that's modular and it's gonna work with a whole bunch of different cartridges. And it just came to me, I need to put this on the amp press and we need to see how seating forces are gonna vary for 6.5 PRC with Hornady brass, with ADG brass. These are both new sets of brass here. And then sort of as a control data set in comparison, I've got some previously fired Lapua brass. I would use new brass, but I only had loaded ammo. So I've got once fired brass that are resized and I thought this would be kind of a cool thing. Now I haven't mandrelled it. We typically mandrel new brass when we load for precision because that opens up the necks a little bit. Sometimes they're a little bit small by design and it helps to sort of control the bullet seating forces. So lots more testing that could be done. A little bit of background information. The APS die, uh, in that overview video, I show all of the different internal components and parts. I have tables of how the different parts are configured for different cartridges. So for this, we have the Model 2 seating stem. We've got the Type 6 base, and we've got the regular cartridge centering sleeve plus the medium top pusher. Okay, that gives you a quick overview. I show the in-depth process of setting up this APS die in that overview video. So if you're curious about this die, you're going to want to check that out for sure. I've also used the test die with the amp press to make sure that it's functioning properly and have also found zero uh, with an unloaded cartridge like so. The bullet sitting on top, that pushes up the pusher. We get the ram adjusted for the height. Then we take the cartridge out, push down the pusher. We do find X zero, it runs the ram down, it touches the top and it knows that that's where to stop. Okay, so that's all of our setup. And I also have a complete video on the amp press as well, of course, and we've run multiple tests. Not this one, however. Okay, so we've got the brand new Hordity brass. We're gonna use 143 ELDX bullets for all of these. The bullet shouldn't make a big difference on this test. And I set the bullet seating depth for this dummy cartridge, which is actually factory precision hunter ammunition from Hornady. Let's see what's gonna happen. Let's start with Hornady. We're gonna go ahead and hit go here. That's gonna run a trace. Okay, so there's our first one. Hornady number one. Do Hornady number two. This is fun because I don't know exactly what's going to happen here. With new brass, things can be all over the place. Okay, Hornady number three. Okay, interesting. Okay, so two of those were, were pretty consistent with one another. Hornady is done. Now the brand new ADG brass. Number one. Okay, that was lower forces, it looks like. Interesting. Five, trace number five. Pretty consistent. And six. Okay, yeah, they're all kind of in that cluster, a little bit more vertical, a little bit less of that initial spike. Very interesting. Okay, previously fired and resized Lapua 6.5 PRC brass. Let's give this a go. I'm expecting this to be even lower. That's just my theory based on the fact that there's gonna be some carbon in there, maybe some re residual imperial case sizing wax. Oh, interesting. See that there's the little spike at first and then a gradual increase. 
So overall, it does look a little bit lower depending on how you interpret the curve there. How consistent will this be? Wow, pretty consistent. A little bit of variance on that first spike there as the bullet is starting to make its way into the neck. Very interesting. And of course, annealing would add a whole different dynamic to all of these tests. Yeah, so that was definitely the most consistent of, of all of the different tests. So let's take a look at this data. So one, this was the first Hornady. Two, that was the second Hornady. Big difference between those. Three, the third Hornady. And then four, five, and six were the ADG. And then seven, eight, and nine were the Lapua previously fired. Very, very interesting. So, you know, this is just one example of the kind of data that you can gather with the amp press, plus you don't have to actually pull the handle. A lot of competitors will use this setup along with their, you know, Amp Mark II annealing machine to kind of make sure that everything is perfect, that they've got good quality control. If you've got an outlier, like another head stamp in the mix, you can imagine here you'd see something like the difference between these three different sets of traces and know that further investigation is required. And then the Infinity APS die, it's a, a great versatile solution. You don't need to buy a whole bunch of inline seeders and you know, it's compact, it doesn't take as up as much space and it's really easy to configure as well. So this is a super interesting setup. My question for you is what else would you like to see with the Infinity APS die from Short Action Customs and with the Amp Press from Annealing Made Perfect? Drop a comment and we'll start that discussion. I might hang out for a while and do some more tests. We will see you all later. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you wanna learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.